Please welcome Ariana Labed and director Yorgos Lantimos. Um, I, I often start my Q&As with the question, uh, what inspired your movie? But um, in this case, it really has to start with that question. <laughs> yes. Um, and I never know what to say because people ask me that. Um, it, it's, 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 it's a process every time. And uh, I, I've written these my last three films with Ephthemis Filippou, who's a very good friend. And every time we, we, we finish a film, and at even when we're at the editing process of the previous film, we just start discussing what it is that we're interested in, things that we've observed around us, uh, themes, conditions, situations. Um, and it starts from a little thing, you know, so this time we, we wanted to do something about relationships um, and, and how people uh are are so much under pressure in being successful in that domain and how other people view them and how they make them feel or uh how much pressure we we put on ourselves uh for doing what we're supposed to be doing um and i guess because we, we we're not really interested in just representing you know reality on film we always try to structure a world that has a particular uh, that has particular rules that can can lead us um, in a situation where we can we, we can explore this theme that we're interested in under extreme conditions and reveal the absurdity of what of, of our everyday lives and how ridiculous it might be and how horrible and how wonderful and whatever there is there to find out. This is the most kind of expansive for, um, exercise I I of, of this kind. I mean, in, in your other films, it's been a smaller world and, more, and, a, and a, maybe a, sm a smaller area of um, exploration. Here, you have actually two worlds, one world which suggests the other. And I'm interested in how um, which came first, the, the hotel? Did the hotel then suggest the idea of the loners in the forest or perhaps vice versa? I think we, start, we started with the idea of the hotel, the, uh, just the basic idea of when, when, you're, when you become single, you have to go to a hotel and find someone. Um, and then we started coming up with all the rules, the restrictions, the pressure that it has to be... Uh, a certain amount of time, if you don't make it, what happens to you then? And then <laughs> it's just, it's funny, but it's, it's, it, we just follow logic, really. After we set up the, 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 the premise, it's, okay, so what would these people, what would the leadership of this world do if, you know, they wanted to present, for instance, uh, the the uh, what happens to the losers how what how could they do it in a way that it seems also a little bit positive instead of just you know getting rid of them and you know killing them or whatever so that's how we arrived to the idea of them becoming animals because it has kind of a positive side to it as well um, what about the loners, though? How do uh, where yeah they have their own set of rules? They're as, in a way as authoritarian as as the yeah. as the uh, the hotel. So it, it just when we constructed that whole idea about single people from the city going to a hotel to find someone, um, it, it it seemed that it, the the world wasn't complete. That there would be other people that wanted to live differently and have had have different ideas, that they would rebel against this kind of system. Um, and we were interested in showing that part of it as well. And we decided that it, it, it does belong in this film because we were also interested in the irony of someone who uh, tries to escape a certain kind of system uh, 
and kind of manages to do that or rebel against that system, in the end constructs another one w which is slightly different but essentially very similar. So I'm, I, I'm, I was quite interested in that. Ariane, is your character, do you see your character as a loner? She's an anomaly within the film. She isn't uh, in a situation where she has to be with somebody else. Um, at the same time, she's, uh, is she someone that's a loner that's infiltrated the system or is she a third kind of person? Um, I think she's, um, she's kind of following something else and she's trying to please somebody. So she's doing, th doing all, everything she's doing for a purpose. And um, so it's kind of another rule because I think she's doing that for the loner leader somehow. Um, so it, for me, it's a kind of little love story behind everything. Uh, but she doesn't really have a, a belief like that. She's just ready to to be a spy and to go to put herself in danger just because she found a kind of reason to a cause or something like that through this other woman. But within the, um, uh, within the world of the hotel, she's not connected to anybody else the way the hotel manager has a partner. And um, I wondered if there was somebody else that was maybe implied that she's, who is the other half of uh, her other half. She, she's married with a dentist. <laughs> there is a brief scene, a small scene where I say that I, the way I kill him so there is something about, she might, I mean, because she's working in the hotel, she must have somebody. So she's married or engaged with somebody, for sure. If not, she would be an animal. Um, this is maybe a question for both of you, but I was curious about um, what the purpose was of the um, lap dancing that, we, that, you, <laughs> that you do in several scenes. You didn't get what the purpose was? Well, I mean, <laughs> all right, put it another way. What, what was the meaning? Uh, well, for us, it was just a way to have uh, all those residen residents really excited all the time so in order for, and frustrated. So in order for them to, f to uh, find someone as soon as possible. To motivate them. To, yeah, and, and relieve themselves somehow. Okay, well, um, questions out there, I'm sure there are many. Yes. Yes, you, yes. Oh. Um, hello, Tassie. Okay, so I think this is actually probably the realistic portrayal of love and romance that I've seen in many years, so congratulations. I actually have two questions. Number one, um, working with American actors the first time, were there any specific restrictions or freedoms that affected your choices? And then my second one's actually from a friend. Um, he asked, what does ambiguity have to offer an ending that doesn't make it feel like a non-conclusion? Yeah. Um, well, yeah. The the actors were from all around the world, really. Uh, Irish, British, American, um, French, Greek. Uh, so and um, it it was just uh, it was a, it's it was a great opportunity for me making my first English language film to just work with people, you know, where, wherever. They, 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 they were coming from, you know, it was just uh, a matter of finding those people that, li that I'd like to work with and uh, figuring out, you know, if they could fit somewhere within this world. So it was a great opportunity. Um, I was quite nervous in the beginning because I, most of them I didn't really know and I had just met a couple of times uh, and I didn't know, you know, how it, it was going to go down and we didn't, we didn't have much time to rehearse before we, we started filming. Because, um, uh, again, you know, we couldn't bring all those actors from all around the world early enough, so... Uh, but, but it worked, you know, fine in the end. Uh, all of them understood the material really well. They were aware of my work. Uh, they were extremely committed and um, they had great chemistry, which is, I guess, you know, chance and luck as well, because you're not sure about that beforehand. 
So it, yeah, it, it worked really well. Um, and the ambiguity of the ending, um, I, I, just, I just don't think there's any other way for me to end this film or with a certain kind of ambigu ambiguity in any of the films that I've done so far because mainly what, what we do is raise questions about many things. So, uh, and I, I don't want to just finish a film by giving a very specific narrow answer uh, to all of those questions. Uh, so that, that's, I think, how it works for this. In a well. sense, if the film had ended with him gouging out his eyes, that would have been an affirmation of love. And if he had instead walked away and left her there, it would have been a denial of love. Yeah, exactly. So I think there's also a third version. And they might find another way to yeah. be together and, and not follow the rules of the town, of the, this other world. And whatever anyone else can you know, come up with. Because it, it, some, you know, when people are v very engaged uh, with films, and if you manage to, to structure the film uh, that is open enough for the audience members to, um, to engage, but with their personal um, experiences and background and education and cultural uh, differences or whatever, you, you, you hear things that are quite extraordinary or, you know, sometimes people even see things in the film that are not really there uh, in order for them, you know, to justify what it is that they think actually happened or is going to happen. And that's quite interesting to, to see. Uh, yes. In the back, towards the back, nearly in the back. Yeah, you. Yeah, oh, okay, sorry. Keep forgetting that we have these mics. Thank you. Uh, perhaps this goes hand in hand with the kind of authoritarian aspect of the, of the society, but could you talk a little bit about how like almost everyone in the film is infantilized in some way. Like everyone is so childish, ex especially like this kind of uh, obsession about your defining characteristic, like the short-sightedness or the or like the limping, and like that's the only way you can be together with somebody. Like that's what I was most struck uh, about, like how society itself was so infantilized. Um, so I. I I guess that's that's again one of those um, ways that we find in order to push things and you know like play with what happens in reality that you know you you do find superficial ways of uh, justifying uh, why you ha you make certain choices why you feel like you can approach someone, be with someone, leave someone, um, and, you know, pushing that to, to those kind of extremes that there's actually, you know, legislation that says, you know, there's, this needs to happen in order for these people to be together, uh, just enhances that whole process, uh, an idea of what we're going through uh, in order to uh, try and be in a relationship or get away uh, or get out of a relationship but do you to kind of follow up on his question do you do you feel that the a world in which there are so many rules and so many obligations does reduce its its population to an infantile state well some of them for sure uh, you always find the ones that are um, questioning things, uh, and that's where you know the hope is, I guess. Um, but but the interesting thing is to observe that people in this film, but in in reality as well, follow completely absurd rules, and nobody, you know, they, you get used to it. You you're educated in a certain way. Um, and, you know, many years can go by and, you know, people just don't question. It's like that's how it's done and that's 
the way it is. And, you know, if you distance yourself from it, and I guess we're trying to have that distance by, like I said, you know, pushing things to extreme. Uh, when you distance yourself, you, you can realize how absurd some of the things that we consider normal are. Uh, yes. Thank you for an exceptional film. I'm still trying to get my mind around, I mean, it's politically and structurally, it's one of the most exciting things I've seen in a while. And I, I have, I, I guess you would call it a technical question, but in the way that these are established, the hotel society is very, it's very established, it's very bureaucratic. Even their cruelties when they, when they burn uh, John C. Riley's character's hand is meant so that he can't touch himself anymore, so he'll be f more inclined to follow their rules and find a mate. Whereas with the loners, it seemed to me that while there may have been loners in the woods for however long there's been a hotel, it seemed to me that the structure that had been imposed on them by their leader is very much coming from her character, that so much is a rebellion against the values of her parents. Um, uh, just the, the, the thing that struck me is, oh, we only listen to electronic music, you know, because he's, she's rebelling against uh, the parents' classical music playing. Um, and I, I don't know if that's anything, but it just struck me as the idea of like, you know, w w is that something that you saw that, you know, as long as there's been a hotel, there's always been loners uh, battling against each other, or is this, is this vision of this leader character shaping them into something different? Yes, yeah, so, um, f for example, what you just said, that she's rebelling against her parents because they play classical music and the loners only dance to electronic music, that never crossed our minds. <laughs> um, but, but that's great, I mean, because, you know, there's all these things that, it might have been there. It might have been, you know, unconsciously there. You know, the the choice uh, when you have to make a choice as a filmmaker. So, what do the their parents? What kind of music do 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 they play? And you go classical, and then you've written something like electronic music for the forest and the loners. That initially came just because you know electronic music. It's easier to dance by yourself, and it's not romantic, and you don't need you know to pair with someone. That's where it comes from. But then, you know, you can connect it with another choice that we've made somewhere else, and that's great. And it might be true, it, it, might, be, it might not be true. I mean, definitely we hadn't thought of it. Um, but do you see her leadership and, and, her, uh, and uh, her, her rules, are they, are they specifically being coming from her, or is there a kind of a many communities of loners who all share the same values? Yes, I, I, I don't know, uh, but again, you know, the the way he saw it. I mean, I'm I'm open to, you know, listening to that. And um, f for us, we we try and you know be as much precise as we can with what we're showing. And beyond that, I mean, you can ask a million questions like, are there like thousands of hotels around the country? Are there many cities? Is is it the whole world? I mean, there's there's clues there that you can go either way and you can and that's what excites me in in films that are constructed in this way that you can then think about it and you know imagine a, a bigger world and how it works and and i don't know where it's coming from the fact that you know uh, the gentleman thinks that it's coming from her character uh possibly because you know the hotel is more of a uh more of an institution and more of what we've used as an institution, you know, there's a building, there's people that work for, there's a more formal uh, form in there. While in the forest, uh, it's, it's uh, even visually, it's, it's more difficult to, to uh, get that. So I guess most of the weight falls on her to be the institution. So I think that's why, but again, it wasn't our intention to say, you know, that what happens here is just because of her. Um, yes, you there, pointing at you. Going to make these people that bring the mics do some work. Uh, hi, I just wanted to ask about um, how you worked with the actors because it seems like there's a very interesting 
approach to performance where uh, no one feels quite convincing in what they say as if they're playing at being a person at what they think Could someone should that? say. No, 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 it's no. a question about how you work with the actors. There's a very sort of specific performance style that's, that's, that kind of crosses through all of these different performers and it's something that Ariane can talk about as well. Um, there is a very distinct style uh, and a way of delivery, a kind of register in which everybody speaks. And you mentioned that you didn't really have much time to rehearse, so how did you impose that? <laughs> I don't know, really. I, it's, it's strange. I guess some of it starts from the text itself. It, I think it's quite particular, uh, the tone uh, of the dialogue. Um, and you know, when the actors get it, they, they, they do it. Um, another thing is that w we try not to overanalyze how it should be done. Uh, and we just work practically and trying things and doing things and then tweaking them or changing them. Um, but yeah, maybe Ariane can speak more about it because I'm, you know, I don't know how I do it. You know. I don't know either, actually. But if I mean, it's sure it's mainly from the text and the rhythm of the text. If you follow it, it's just exactly I think um, what you're searching for. And then I think you always try to make sure that we are lost, lost enough to not, you know, not being self-conscious. So we kind of just follow this text and without exactly knowing what we're doing. And I think it kind of gives this rhythm and this, uh, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of natural. But I do understand that you put uh, um, the actors, you make sure that we don't exactly know what's going on. Yeah, we no? <laughs> that's how we do it. We make sure that they don't know what's going on. <laughs> No, but it's, it's, it's true because uh, I guess what it is behind it is that um, there's this, uh, when an actor, you know, has something very particular in mind about what the scene is about and how he's going to do it and what every line means and, you know, why the character says that and all those sort of things, f for me... I can see right through it what he's doing, and it becomes quite narrow. And then, you know, the scene or or the moment doesn't re resonate, you know, beyond that. And it's it's you know very obvious uh, uh, what happens. So, yes, I think there's an there's an effort to, although it might appear stylized, to to approach reality like like it is because we don't really know you know we haven't thought of before what we're going to say and how we're going to say it and why we're saying that thing so as much as you can keep the actors you know just doing it instead of you know having a very particular uh plan uh about how they're going to do it i think you can get more to the truth of it uh yes I'd like to ask a question about your vision and the writer's vision of how the gender is used in the film, not the performances, but just how you see the gender in the film because I found that one of the most fascinating parts of the film. Uh, it's a question about the, the I guess, uh, the role of gender in the film, um, uh, not in the performances per se, but just uh, as, a, as a theme, I guess, in the film. Um, I mean, I, I don't know, that's quite general. Um, well, one thing we try to do is have women being more authoritative this time than because everybody was asking in the previous films, you know, why are men authoritative and they're mean to women and women rebel against them. So I said, now the women are going to be authoritative and... So that was a choice, um, but I don't know. We just try to to you know to cover as much as possible. 
various situations and uh, variations of you know what happens in relationships. Well, there's the the heartless woman as well. I mean, maybe yeah. normally we would think of a heartless man, but yeah. she's a very striking character. Yeah, but yeah, but there's there's all sorts of different characters. I think there's heartless woman. There's the hotel manager and loner leader that are very strong, quite violent, authoritative women. But there's short-sighted woman who's, you know, the opposite. You know, there's biscuit woman. There's the maid. There's this is how the characters are referred yeah. to. <laughs> okay, we have time for one last question. Um, you over there? So we've covered the whole room. Him or her? Either. <laughs> <laughs> Both. Okay. At the same time. Uh, I was just wondering what animal you would like to be. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, well, uh, it's easy. I, I always say uh, that I'd like to be some kind of bird. You know, fly around. Because you're a free spirit. I just like flying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Ariane? Uh, I'd like to be a cat. Cat. Okay, okay Yorgos, Ariane, thank you very much. Thank you.